is biomass. Biomass is renewable biological materials derived from living or recently living organisms. And what is Uri biomass? It's easy. Biomass derived from Uri plants. And it contains cellulose, hemicellulose, these are kind of polysaccharides, and the green phenolic compound. Sometimes we can say these compound as lignocellulosic biomass, right? So, Uri biomass. We previously used these Uri biomass for paper, pulp, and also timber and firewoods. So these are conventional utilization, right? And recently we started to use Uri biomass for new way, a kind of biochemical, bioenergy, and also uh, biomaterial. You may know nanocellulose fiber and films are really famous. New utilization of Uri biomass, right? So, what is the origin of Uri biomass? So here is the picture, a little bit um, rough, but uh, here is the uh, schematic representation of animal cells and plant cells. They have really similar structure, but uh, one important difference between animal and plant is a plant cell wall. So actually, plant cell wall is the origin of Uri biomass. Sometimes it doesn't work. So um, primary cell wall contains cellulose, hemicellulose, pectin, protein, and some uh, other materials. So this, this primary cell wall is really flexible, and after growth of the cell, some cells start to produce secondary cell wall. So it is really thick and rigid cell wall. The secondary cell wall contains, again, cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. So, some cells, such as Uri cells, contain these, uh, have the, these thick and secondary cell wall. Here you can see two types of cells in Uri, uh, Uri tissue, fibers and vessels. In such meaning, if we want to modify the Uri biomass, we need to change these two kind of, kinds of cells. So, <coughs> for modification of Uri biomass, we need to change, mod, uh, modify Uri cells. For example, modification of quantity, we can increase the number of Uri cells or we can change thickness of secondary cell of Uri cells. On the other hand, if we modify the quality, we can change the composition of secondary cell or the Uri cell. In such meaning, understanding of the mechanism of underlying Uri cell differentiation is really, really important. My target is mostly best cell. So best cells are cells conducting water from root to shoots, or sometimes they can support their plant body, okay? And then here you can see the really specific structure of best cells. These are dead cells with thick and secondary cell wall with helical or a spiral wall patterning, secondary cell wall patterning. Sometimes you can see two different types of best cells in the plant body. One is the cells with helical or spiral cell wall. These are we call protoxylem best cells. On the other hand, you can see the other type of cells, pitted or reticulated cell wall. We call these cells metaxylem best cells. 
Okay, so uh, we understand, we want to understand the mechanism of differentiation of these two types of the cell cells using um, model funds basically. But it is not easy because most of the vessels stained by red color here are dead, dead cell. If we can use their cell, we can understand anything about the mechanisms. So we need to use living, differentiating cells. So these blue color cells are just uh, differentiating living vessel cells. If we want to isolate these cells, it is not so easy, actually. And also the other problem, if plants don't have any vessels, they cannot grow, of course. So using a raptors, we can sometimes use mutants. But uh, in this case, we cannot use mutants. Uh -oh. Especially, if there is no vessels in the plant, plant cannot grow like this. So we cannot use mutants or the, uh, some other specific um, variety to analyze the mechanism of the differentiation of the cells. So this is the introduction, and then here I'm going to talk about omics analysis. Omics. So what is omics? So from Wikipedia, so Professor Wikipedia asked, told me about the omics here. So omics informally, uh, informally refers to a field of study in biology ending in omics, such as genomics, proteomics, or metabolomics. And o omics, or maybe see omic, uh, om is, sorry, om is used to address the object of study of such fields, such as genome, proteome, or metabolome, respectively. And omics aims at the collective characterization of quantification of proofs of biological molecules that translate into the structure, function, and dynamics of an organism or organisms. So, OM is the molecule. Omics is the analysis, the, the uh, kind of analysis, right? And then, so here is a genomics, transcriptomics, and proteomics, and also metabolomics. These are really famous ones. And we can analyze genome, transcriptome, proteome, and metabolome. So um, I carried out some omics analysis, basically transcriptome, proteome, metabolome. So these analyses tell us a lot of uh, new mechanisms of differentiation of the vessel differentiation. So I've been using nut tree flower. Uh, actually, this is not. Uh, this is the flower of Zinnia elegans. So Zinnia elegans has really interesting feature. Using leaves of Zinnia elegans plant, we can isolate cells. So it is not so good picture, but uh, um, single cells with a uh, hundred micrometer size using auxin and cytokine as a type of hormone. And we can induce a differentiation through the upregulation of rational cell. It also uh, plant hormone to the vessel element in culture, okay? So using culture cell, we can induce the vessels. So such that a uh, system allows us to analyze the mechanism very clearly. In addition, using a rabbit office, we can induce the differentiation similarly. So, using this system, we carry the transcript analysis. Transcript using basically microarray or gene chip. This, uh, this entry we can use RNA set analysis for the transcript. And we found a lot of, lot of genes which have upregulated the expression during the uh, culture. 
So these upregulated genes might be related to the differentiation strongly. And actually, we found that some genes related to cellulose hemicellulose lignin biosynthesis or the uh, program cell death. As I said, the cells are a dead cell, and cell death occur program. So, of course, these um, genes related to the production of cellulose hemicellulose lignins are really important and interesting. But uh, for us, we want to find the key regulatory genes which could be transcription factors. Transcription factors are protein which can enhance the expression of or the uh, translation of RNA. So we focus on these transcription factors. Especially you can see a lot of not domain proteins and also meat family transcription factors. These are a kind of really famous transcript factors. And especially we focus on NAC transcription factors. NAC transcription factors are plant specific. So only plant have this NAC transcription factor family. So we focus on these NAC transcription factors. As expected, really long story short, we found some genes which can induce the differentiation of this element freely, actually. If we express some of these NAC transcription factors, we can produce this element. In another word, we can induce, we can produce really biomass. So uh, this is the picture we found first. Um, BND6 and 7 are NAC transcription factors. If we express Boba express BND6 and BND7 in Rhabdopsis root, we can induce the cells with secondary cell or best cells. But you can see here, these two genes have different direction. BND6 can induce metaxylen vessel with pitted secondary cell wall. It's a metaxylen vessel. BND7 can induce a helical secondary cell wall, which is prozylen vessel. So um, we had been looking for these important genes for the differentiation of two different types of vessels. So we found these genes in 2005. So here we know that BND6 and 7 are master regulator of the cell element differentiation. They can induce all genes related to cell death, lignocellulose biosynthesis. And using these genes, we and some other groups, gene, uh, groups identify a lot of genes related to the differentiation of the cell element as well as fibers. Actually, um, NST1, SND1 are really similar genes to the BND6 and BND7. And these family genes can induce the differentiation of all of these um, processes. So, this is found mostly in Rhabdopsis. But, how about evolution? So, plant, so I showed the picture first. Mosses, trees, these are all land plants. And we really found that evolution of plant um, lead the, um, keep the BND family genes, the same family genes. So um, as you know, well, it's not so clear, but uh, Moses bryophytes are uh, earliest land plant, and then going to ferns and also going to gymnosperm and angiosperms. So we focus on some bryophytes, moss, Fisco mitrella patents. This is a model mosca. They don't have any vessels or fibers, but they 
actually have the cells to transport water. They are really small plants, but they can transport water. And we thought that these water transport cells, water conducting cells, can be controlled by BND family, the same family genes. Actually, they do have really similar genes. So this is a phylogenetic tree of BND. So we now call BNS family gene. And then, so here is a BND gene. It is really highly conserved in any plant species. And here is uh, some, most genes really similar to BND, BNS family, okay? And we analyze these genes carefully. And one important thing is, if we express these most genes in Arabidopsis, okay? So early plant gene to the higher, we can induce the differentiation of basic elements with um, secondary cell. So the mechanism is highly, highly conserved. Actually, if we knock out one of gene, PPBNS4, in this case, plant cannot grow well under the low humidity. This is because loss of the cells. So H means the hydroid, these are cells water conduction. And this is a mutant. We cannot see any hydroids in these plants. So this mutant don't mutant doesn't uh, doesn't have any hydroids and they cannot grow um, correctly healthy. And also uh, we analyzed the uh, gene expression downstream of BNS uh, BNS gene in POMOS and found that some important genes related to cell wall formation or the uh, cell death can be found based on the uh, geo network analysis. These genes are mostly similar to the downstream genes in Arabidopsis. So uh, again, the gene regulatory network downstream of these master regulators are really, really highly conserved during the uh, evolution. So next, I'm going to change my topic. Revolution. So based on our knowledge, our research direction can be um, changed a lot. Basically, using some specific system, using the uh, transcriptional activation domain and also receptor domain of um, blood glucocorticoid receptor. Using this system, we can induce the activation of BND gene really easily. So um, if we use this system, we can change plant white. White, 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 white. So we can induce the differentiation of whole plants. Actually, here you can see the white color can be from degradation of chloroplasts. And here is a picture showing a picture of surface of leaves. And most of the cells differentiate into best element. It, the color is not so good here. Maybe you know stomata uh, with gar cells function in the surface for gas exchange or water evaporation. And then these stomata gas cells can also differentiate into best element. So uh, maybe you can see here, it's not clear, but uh, gar cells, they are differentiated cells, but they, these differentiated cells can also change their cell fate using BND genes. So um, after the identification, the establishment of this system, we published a lot of paper with some other group. 
and then um, using Arabidopsis popula, abaco, and Arabidopsis culture cell, we can induce the differentiation of basal element very easily. So using this system, we carry the another metabolic, uh, meta uh, another orbit analysis. So here is the metabolome analysis, and then using BY2 culture cell, we can induce the differentiation similarly, and then. This system allows us to analyze metabolic changes very carefully in course of differentiation. Uh, we sample the cells from this culture cell and using UPLC tandem mass, LC mass mass analysis uh, in collaboration with Dr. Sawada and Hirai in Riken we carried out the wide target metabolome analysis. So this type of metabolome analysis allows us to identify 700 compounds. From this uh, system, we could find the change in metabolome very clearly. For example, um, this PC analysis on metabolome data shows that uh, time different change in some specific uh, metabolites. Especially we found that some amino acids uh, change, change during the differentiation clearly. For example, chlorine or the loisin, these are uh, important amino acids for the uh, differentiation of the elements. Especially, so th this is the amino acid biosynthesis pathway in plants. And then you can find some big change in these uh, uh, amino acids. For example, this data is also a little bit unclear. Tryptophan are upregulated very much. Uh, some alanine and leucine are upregulated, alanine downregulated. And also, we found that glycyl aldehyde 3-phosphate, GAP, decreased at the beginning of the differentiation. So, after six hours, we can see the strong decrease of this gap, I mean, uh, the, the compound for the uh, pro produce of the uh, amino acids. So, and some other things to analyze this uh, metabolic change much clearly, we carry the transcriptome analysis using RNA-seq system, uh, Illumina GA2X, system. So um, this type of transcript analysis allows us to think about a change of metabolite compared with uh, a transcript from analysis uh, data. Uh, this is a, one of the uh, example. So here is the change around GAP. Some genes are upregulated or downregulated. Down um, so for example, in this case, this uh, gene are uh, upregulated, and then so some there are some um, isoforms of these genes, and then uh, about one third of genes are upregulated strongly soon after the induction. On the other hand, <coughs> some other genes are located here are downregulated. The differentiation process. So again, here we can see that. Some genes are upregulated, and also some genes are downregulated during the differentiation. So, using this system, we think about metabolome change and transcriptome change. So, uh, these change can be analyzed very carefully with the uh, kind of uh, network analysis data. So, this is a summary of metabolome and transcriptome analysis. Before differentiation, this uh, system works very smoothly, but uh, initiation of stage differentiation, some genes are highly upregulated or downregulated, and this change produced, in this case, fructose 6-phosphate, and which can be translated to UDP sugar for the polysaccharide biosynthesis. This type of um, primary Metabolism is important for the product production of scandinavian cells. 
So primary metabolites, primary metabolome and secondary metabolome can be related to each other. Next example is using um, pyrosis GC mass metabolome analysis. We found a lot of genes and from this, we selected 108 genes which could be changed several um, characteristic. We produce overexpressor using these 108 genes and we analyze 362 samples using pulse GC mass analysis. Pulse GC mass is uh, a system to analyze the um, cellulose or uh, lignin. And then this system allows us to analyze these, these compounds very carefully and um, in, in detail. A special method data analysis allows us to produce this type of heat map. So this heat map is really important. It, um, each row shows the transgenic plants and each Column shows the peaks. And then here you can see several uh, different columns. So blue color shows the peaks derived from uh, carbons, so polysaccharides. SGH shows the lignin and some other uh, related compounds. And for example, here you can see some specific group. So this group has that uh, interesting feature. So I'm sorry, that in this case, blue color means higher expression, a higher accumulation. Color, red color means lower accumulation. So here you can see blue color. This uh, cluster shows the blue color here and red color here. So especially here you can see some green color column, meaning G type of green. So G-type lignin are upregulated in this cluster. This cluster have interesting genes, such as SND genes or SSA genes. SSA genes are uh, um, genes for cellulose biosynthesis. Okay. So these genes can be clustered. These transgenic plants are clustered using this system. On the other hand, to think about the utilization of our knowledge. Um, saccharification um, is really important. So saccharification means the degradation of polysaccharide. If we use these plants for the poly, uh, saccharification analysis, some of plant, some, some, uh, a lot of transient plants show is a higher um, saccharification efficiency. So these genes, these plant have specific characteristics. So using the um, kind, kind of data, um, heat map data and relationship of heat map data and sacrification efficiency, we can see that a strong uh, coefficient. So suggesting that some of the uh, important metabolites can be um, found for the sacrification of so I'm going to change topic into the proteome. So similarly, we use the Arabidopsis or the um, tobacco BYQ culture cell with the uh, uh, analysis of proteome. And um, we <coughs> sampled the uh, BYQ culture cell and carried out the analysis using the uh, quantitative protein uh, uh, analysis. And they found that so many proteins are abbreviated during the uh, uh, differentiation. Especially using PCA analysis, we found some specific change during the differentiation. And some of proteins are abbreviated and some are downregulated. So based on this data, we provide the kind of free heat map again, and then some proteins are highly upregulated during the differentiation and some are downregulated. And interestingly, if we compare the tra uh, transcriptome data again, 
some are not changed. Some are highly upgraded, some, are, some protein genes are highly upgraded in the plasma, but not in the protein. So such that uh, change can be think about much carefully. And then maybe we need to think about omics network based on this type of analysis. So um, in future, we would like to find specific metabolites, specific protein, and specific gene to change the uh, characteristic quantity or quality of good biomass. So um, I'm going to finalize my talk for the uh, utilization of mechanisms underlying UD biomass production here. To think about the lignocellulose UD biomass production, we need to use plant, the UD plants. So this is model UD plant tree, uh, poplar. Poplar, using poplar, we can produce GM poplar with modified with the quality and uh, uh, quantity or quality of the cell. And also, we can produce GM poplar with increased with the quantity of the cell, the uh, cell. For example, here, if we suppress the function of BND6 and BND7 gene in poplar, um, here is a white type, you can see red color somehow. Red color means big green. And these plants, trees, with suppress BD6 and 7 shows the um, thin, thinner uh, red color, showing that lignin is reduced in these plants. So now we can produce pop up, reduced lignin contents. On the other hand, if we overexpress these genes, sometimes we can induce the increment of uh, glucose, increment of xylose, or in increase of lignin. In this case, these plants show is a higher xylose amount, showing that, suggesting that higher xylan, heavy cellulose contents. The other experiment, we can induce the uh, thick increase of thickness of cell in poplar. So this is also not good, but maybe you can see here, over expression of SND, one of, one of the uh, BND family gene can induce the much thicker cell wall. And MIB-46 also induce the much thicker cell wall. So in this case, without changing cell number or the um, size of plant, we can increase the biomass, UD biomass. So this type of uh, modification we can um, now succeed in. Well, um, after finding of this um, change, we need to start to use these plants outside. So for this type of field test, we have a really, really nice collaboration with two specific groups. One is Tsukuba University, led, led by Professor Kazuo Watanabe, and the other is Nanjing Forest University in China, led by um, Professor Tsuge. So in these systems, we started to plant transgenic poplar in the field. And especially in Nanjing Forest University, we already started the uh, planting of transgenic poplar to think about the uh, effectiveness of the of, uh, uh, modification. Okay, and um, it's a little bit short, but uh, um, I'm going to conclude my um, talk. So here is a take home messages for you. BN test genes encoding NAP transcript factors are master transcription factors switches that control UD biomass production, okay? So now we know how to change, how to produce UD biomass. 
And now, Mao's omics approaches helps us to understand molecular mechanism of UV biomass production, using which we would be able to utilize this um, knowledge for modification of UV biomass. Okay. So uh, these are my um, collaborators, especially people in Nara Institute of Science and Technology, Dr. Tisato Otani, some students, and a uh, uh, student from China now uh, working in Cambridge, and some uh, really important people who analyze our data together. And then um, I really hope to say um, thank you to these people. And also, um, Teddy Makashi, all the people here in this hall.